Alright, hey guys, so, um, school is delayed, and I thought I would share another video. So I've been writing this story fan fiction of Spider-Man, and I thought I might as well read it too. Alright, so, it's called Blade Spider vs. Spider-Man. Blade Spider is actually my own character, and I will explain him in another video. Alright, here we go. First person narration. Chapter 1, Cole slash Blade Spider, Recognize Me. The sound of my own footsteps echoed in my ears as I ran down the alleyway, rushing to the scene. Some douchebag criminal had set the family's house on fire, causing a gas explosion. Of course, New York being New York, they called their so-called hero, Spider-Man, to save the day. Now that's the problem. They called him. They always do. Why can't they call someone else, like me, once in a while? Oh, that's right. Because of him. Spider-Man, he's the center of their attention, making headlines on every season. Day, every day. As for me, no. I'm forgotten. I don't get credit. Sometimes I remember the scene way before he does, and I help. A lot. But do I get the glory? No. He steals it from me. I'm mean, sure I may be some knockoff 15 year old Spider Man, but at least my heart's in the right place. I'm no criminal, yet everyone used to treat me like one years ago. And besides, my suit looks way better than Spider Man's. Hell, I have wings made of katana blades and a tail made of chain. Instead of webs, I use more chains with really sharp blades at the end, and gray, white, blue, and silver is much better than his usual black, red, and blue. So what I'm trying to say is that I deserve the credit. I'm the blade spider. I'm really the one saving New York. But do they care? Do they notice? Of course not. I'm starting to rethink helping New York. They don't help or even care about me, so... The only sensible thing to do is to return the favor to the people who have wronged me, even though it's not direct. Like Spider-Man. Crime is a bitch, ain't it? Point blank? Recognize me. So I spread my bladed wings and take off towards the gas explosion site. Chapter 2. Spider-Man. The silver-winged figure. I swung overhead as fast as I could to get, this, to get to the scene as quickly as possible. I only had one thing in mind. To save the people. To save New York. The wind whistled past my ears as I gained speed and got closer to saving the victims of the fire. Or explosion. I could see the smoke and the police sirens coming into view. Just a little more, I muttered to myself as I was only a few streets away now. The sound of people screaming and crying mixed with officers yelling orders and sirens blaring rang inside my head as I accelerated towards my goal. Then I looked down, and I couldn't believe my eyes. I saw this silverish blue figure quickly moving below me, and that figure was starting to pull ahead of me. Strange thing was, it was flying. The strange figure was flying. But how? And I noticed the figure had wings. And not normal wings made out of feathers. These wings were different. They seemed sharp and they were shiny silver like expertly polished metal. I thought to myself, how can this be? This figure is flying faster than I can swing. But I dismissed that thought as immediately as the odor of smoke and gas seeped through my mask and filled my nose. I remembered what I was doing at once. Saving the day. I dropped down in front of the house and sprinted inside. I'd lost track of the figure I saw earlier, but I thought I saw it again out of the corner of my eye, peeking at me from behind a doorway. I quickly turned around and there was nothing, or no one, there. Again, I repressed the thought, and I ran upstairs and looked through each room to make sure no one was trapped inside. I swiftly but thoroughly sweep through every room, but once I got to the last room on the light, right, I stopped dead. There it was. It was the figure staring right back at me with vicious, angled eyes. Chapter 3. Cole slash Blade Spider. Frenemy's Unexpected Rendezvous. I rushed into the house, or what remained of it, through the back door. I noticed as usual. Sigh. <sighs> Damn it, I really need to be recognized. Like, seriously, New York? What the hell? Anyway, I crept inside. Then there he was, Spider-Man. He was already in the main room of the house, looking around. Then he turned and looked right in my direction. Luckily, I was standing right by a doorway leading into the kitchen. I thought quickly, knowing that I'm risking being seen by him. I dived behind the doorway and peered at him. He was looking away now, but then, Spider-Man being the attentive hero of New York City, he turned and looked at me once again. I ducked down behind the doorway, praying that he hadn't seen me. I was lucky, as he didn't seem to notice me. He sprinted up the stairs at what I'm guessing was his top speed. Once he got up there, I silently followed close behind. He went into the first room on the left and looked around for survivors. I ran down the hallway to the very last room on the right. 
thought I sensed something wrong in here. I thought to myself, and boy was I right. I saw it. I saw her. A little girl, maybe four to five years younger than me. And keep in mind, I'm only 15, so she's gotta be pretty young. She was trapped under a support beam that had fallen from the ceiling. She was unconscious, and I couldn't tell if she was breathing or not from all the smoke in the room. There was one big problem. There was a huge wall of fire between me and her. There was no visible way to get to her. But then I remembered, I'm the blade spider. A spider! And what do spiders do? Besides creep people out? They stick to surfaces. The fire is only around 10 inches taller than me, and despite my powers, I can't jump very high. So I stuck to the wall and climbed over the fire onto the broken ceiling. And me being a teenager I am, I didn't pay attention. And while reaching forward to grip, I, un I unknowingly pushed my hand right onto an exposed nail. Damn it! I screamed mentally, biting my lip to stop myself from screaming in pain. Great, and I only have one working hand, I grimly thought to myself. I slowly lifted my now very bloody hand from the nail and held it close to my chest. I inched forward with only three working limbs, but I eventually reached the other side and dropped down next to the girl. Then, out of all the things that could happen, he walked in. Spider-Man walked in and stared right at me, while I stared right back at him. Chapter 4. Spider-Man. Doppelganger Shock. I froze in both shock and, I had to admit it, fear and intimidation. The figure seemed to be a very young male from what I can tell. He was crouched on the next to a little girl who was trapped underneath the support beam. I couldn't tell if she was there to help her or to hurt her even more. Then I noticed. There was blood on his suit. I looked closer. Then I realized he was hurt. Badly. He was holding his hand close to his chest, which indicated that was most likely where the injury occurred. I wanted to go over to him and the girl to investigate. There was a huge firewall separating us. I wondered, how could he have gotten to the other side? Then I saw more. He looked exactly like me, and yet, not at all like me at the same time. He had a very similar suit. In fact, he looked like some knockoff version of me. His suit was a light gray with silver, blue, and white details. He had a long chain tail and silver wings made of katana blades? Then I realized. He was the figure I saw earlier. He's like me and yet yeah, not like me. And it sensed it. He was a spider person. He had powers like me and powers of his own. Then I suddenly understood how he got over the firewall. He climbed over like a spider, but uh so I walked over to the wall and did the same, hoping to reach him and the girl in time to save them both. Chapter 5. Cole slash bellied spider. Help from unexplained, unexpected places. I watched intently as he did what I did seconds ago, only he got lucky and missed the nail that stabbed me. I tensed up as he got closer. Was he going to be mad that I was stealing his job? How was he going to react to a teenage Spider-Man? Person. No, not Miles Morales, I mean me. I backed away against the wall as he dropped down right in front of me and the girl. He nodded, signaling that he sensed I was a spider person and that he was here to help. Okay, so I guess he's cool with me? I thought as I watched him claw at the rubble, trying to feel, free the girl. Once he cleared enough space, I watched him wedge both his hands, like he still has us both his hands, and not some bloody hole in one of them, he ain't Jesus, under the fallen support beam to lift it up off the girl. I listened as he strained to lift it up, as it was very heavy. I sensed he needed help, but I was torn between two things. Not help him and spare myself from effort and the risk of more pain from my injury, or help him and not have to deal with the guilt, yet risk injuring myself further. I made a split-second decision at once. I got up, rushed over, and stood next to Spider-Man, and wedged my good hand and tail underneath the beam and helped him lift the beam up off the girl. I leaned up against the beam to prevent it from falling again as he quickly grabbed both the girl from under the beam. Once he got her out safely, I backed away from the beam and allowed it to fall again. Once I looked at the way out, life just had to be a, you know. Both us spider people watched in horror as more support beams and other crap fell from the ceiling in front of the door, putting out the firewall, but at the same time, blocking our only way out. The door. We were trapped, and all three of our lives were on the line. Chapter 6. Spider-Man. Unlikely help. I watched in horror as the rebel- Ah. Okay, guys, so unfortunately, this is the longest chapter, and it seems like I'm gonna have to stop here soon. Okay, so basically, I hope that you like so far. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and comment, of course. There will be more details describing the story in the description below. Alright, hope you like the video. See you next time. Alright, see ya.